My name is Robert J. Moore. I'm the CEO and co-founder of RJ Metrics. We're a business intelligence software company headquartered in Camden, New Jersey, right on the waterfront in the Waterfront Technology Center. Uh, we were founded in June of 2008, I believe. It was kind of the, the earliest inception date. Um, at the time, I was working at a venture capital firm up in New York, uh, along with my co-founder, Jake Stein. Uh, he and I were doing a lot of work on due diligence for new investments for that firm. We did a ton of work on diving into companies' back-end databases and finding the good, the bad, and the ugly. It is a really telling process and a really educational process to do that. It's also a highly redundant process. Once you've done it a few dozen times, uh, despite the fact that everyone's database looks a little bit different, ultimately you're doing fairly similar analyses uh, regardless of the business model. Uh, you're just looking at different things, but you're looking at those different things kind of using the same methods. So the idea came to us to productize that process and actually conduct uh, what you might call due diligence, what you might just call business intelligence or data analysis using a fully automated, fully hosted software product. Um, and we left the firm uh, within a, a few months of that and started coding. Uh, I kind of always knew that I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I had a web design business in high school. I had a college consulting business in college. Um, and. I took the job at the venture firm less because of an interest in finance and more because of an interest in access to interesting startups and interesting companies. And one of the side effects of, of working there was that I got to meet hundreds upon hundreds of CEOs of businesses at all different stages of the company life cycle. Um, and it became clear for a number of reasons that uh, you know the dream that was deep in my heart of becoming an entrepreneur was one that I truly wanted to continue pursuing. Um, there's obvious financial upside and you learn a lot working in venture capital about uh, equity and dilution and kind of situations where you can walk away um, being a great financial success. We also learn about happiness and kind of the, those people who have made all their money uh, you know, who kind of has a smile on their face when they go to sleep at night. And it tends to be people who have control over their own path and are able to do everything within their power uh, to shape their own trajectory and, and go after what they want. And I think that that's a freedom that's provided by entrepreneurship and, and probably very, very few other uh, career paths. When I think about lessons that I learned from working in venture capital, uh, one of the first things that, that comes up is financial responsibility. Um, there are a lot of companies who behave differently when they raise money or when they don't raise money. Um, and there's certainly a large class of companies that kind of enjoys putting the pedal to the metal and really putting, raising money and putting it to work immediately and, and kind of burning through a lot of cash with the hope that you know, the, the trajectory and the throttle that gets built up by all that spending will, will push them to the next level. And it works sometimes. and. It doesn't work other times, and you know, especially with early stage businesses. If you look at uh, venture performance, most businesses fail, even venture backed companies, um, particularly at the early stage. It's the ones that really hit it big that kind of make the funds successful and kind of pay for all the losses. Um, so when you see you know a certain number of flame outs and you see a certain number of successes, um, you start to notice the things that the successes did right, and I think that um, being extremely uh, savvy about how you spend money even when you have an excess of it is extremely important. Um, not hiring too aggressively, not spending money on media or kind of lead gen that you don't exactly know how it's going to pan out. Every dollar that we spend, every decision that we make is based on a very, very, very firm analysis of the fact that that dollar is going to come back to us many times over as a result of having done that. Um, and you know we kind of live by that principle and uh, you know we haven't raised capital to date and that's kind of been part of part of that mantra that we put together it's just that uh, we certainly have the ability to bring in outside capital anytime that we would like but we haven't gotten to a point yet where we're entirely confident that uh, you know if we have a smaller piece of the pie as a result of having uh, having raised money that the pie is ha isn't going to grow enough that uh, what we've got left is actually more than what we had before um, when we get to that point, I think it's entirely possible that we do raise capital, but I think, um, you know, at, at this point, we are growing extremely well and we're able to, we just hired our first two employees entirely out of cash flow. Um, and based on that, uh, kind of our feelings today, I think that we're extremely happy that we made the decisions we did because even if we had raised money on day one, um, 
I can't say with confidence that we would have done or performed any better than we have to date. I'm the programmer, he's the sales guy, I'm kind of in some ways the uh, lofty want to fly around the world uh, and do all kinds of wacky promotions and, and he's kind of, uh, you know, looking over the books and picking out exactly the things that are actually going to get a return for us. Um, I think Jake's done a lot for influencing the philosophies that we have around um, how we spend money, how we make decisions around bringing on new people, um, around bringing on new clients, growing out the features of the business. Um, uh, you know, as a programmer, if I think of something that's extremely cool and would be very challenging for me to build and very interesting to create, uh, I get a huge urge to do it. Um, and I've got a huge to-do list of that's 100 items strong. And if I was the only one running this business, I think more often than not, those things would somehow find their way to the top of the list, even though they might not be the things that will actually end up adding the most value to the business. Uh, you know, a big thing that Jake did very early on was uh, Jake's intimately involved in the planning of the programming process. Even though he's not a programmer, he knows what features I'm building, he knows what's in the pipeline, and we had discussions on a regular basis about what's outstanding and how we should prioritize those things. And typically what it boils down to is what's going to help us make more money? And that's through one of two things. Either it's going to help us retain existing customers or it's going to help us lure in new customers. And sometimes the feature that the customer wants uh, is the most boring thing in the world to me. It's something that I would do anything to avoid, but I cannot argue with reason. And I think that you know one reason we work together well is that if one of us defeats the other in an argument with a sound, reasonable uh, justification for something, uh, the other one doesn't huff and puff and walk out of the room. The other one says, oh yeah, you know, you're right. I can't argue with that. And I think that, you know, it challenges both of us to spend time working on things that aren't the most fun in the world and aren't the most fun thing that we could be doing, but are the most productive thing and the best thing for the business. I get some kind of sick pleasure out of reading about startups that are, uh, you know, struggling through a hard time in, in their path and I get a lot of enjoyment about reading startups that are doing extremely well um, and I think that I can draw inspiration from both of those scenarios so I, you know, I like to keep up to speed with news about businesses that are up and coming and that are successful and you know, unfortunately a lot of the press is biased toward companies that have raised a bunch of money so if you go on TechCrunch a lot of the stories are going to center around a funding announcement or some kind of uh, very early product launch that's kind of backed by a big name guy in Silicon Valley or that you know had someone from a previous business launched. It's sometimes difficult to number one kind of filter the junk out from that um, and number two identify businesses that don't necessarily meet any of those criteria so uh, you know a number of our customers up in New York are businesses that have uh, been founded by really smart people who maybe haven't run businesses before, who haven't necessarily raised capital to get where they are today, but are running a really interesting business and generating a lot of money. Uh, that's a company that's extremely interesting to me and that I want to learn about and that I want to model myself after because I think that they share a lot of the attributes that we place value on. Um, the way to, I guess, my particular interest in companies that have that profile stems directly from my time at the venture capital firm, I think, because uh, they're, when making invis investment decisions there, you know, a company that hasn't raised any capital yet, that has grown pretty su substantially, that has become cash flow positive, all these things make for a better venture investment. That's because they have a very high probability of succeeding and leading to a successful exit, which is really what venture guys are looking for. Um, there's a strong correlation between the attractiveness of a potential venture investment and the attractiveness as a business, as an owner. Um, the people who happen to be owning those businesses that are attractive investments are obviously in a fantastic spot. Even made more fantastic by the fact that external investors want to get on board. Uh, so I think that you know, following businesses that look like companies I might invest in if I was an angel investor, um, that's really where I get a lot of inspiration from, to kind of find, uh, you know, find myself aspiring to be like someone else.